Amstrad CPC means a lot to me. Will you come and see how I play Desi? If you're in love with retro gaming, come and join the board. And if you want a Friday for some, watch him and you could. No football. How you doing everyone? Leverberg here and I thought I'd give you a bit of a rundown here and a method of how I restore my Amstrad cassettes. Now a lot of the time Amstrad cassettes and Spectrum cassettes and any cassette really will wither over time, they will degrade, they'll get damaged uh, they are old. A lot of these are old. This is for instance Yo-Yo Kung Fu is 1985 we are in 2021 now so you can imagine this game is a little bit old 36 years, uh, yeah, 36 years old in fact. So you, you can imagine the original cassette is probably not in great nick. Um, a lot of the time we were told that these kind of cassettes might have a 10 year life on them, a 15 year life on them. Turns out a lot of them don't. Uh, a lot of them are much better than you think they are. The majority of my Amstrad CPC games which are in these cases here work first time and a lot of those are, well all of those are now uh, pretty much over 30 years old. And they work, so, but of course sometimes they don't. The tape degrades, it loses the magnetic integrity, they get damaged, many things can happen. So uh, after many months of tinkering and stuff, I, I, I hit on a way of re restoring the games uh, as is, as, in, as is close to original purchase condition as possible. So I'm just going to take you through some of the materials and the software and the equipment that I use for this process. So obviously we've got the original games, uh, you want to keep the original artwork and casing as much as intact as possible. And you want to keep, if you can, the original labels. Now there are techniques to do this. Uh, I don't really like soaking them off because that can actually uh, damage the print, obviously, for obvious reasons. You can do with this IP or even water. I don't do that. I take a hairdryer. I'm not advertising there, turn it around. I take a hairdryer and if it looks like the label, uh, the glue on the label, sometimes the glue on the label is, is, is not that adhesive and it will just come away with a little bit of heat induced to it. Be aware that when you do this, you will completely ruin the cassette. So if you are going to go through with this, make sure that you can't salvage the original cassette uh, because that is an option to do as well. Uh, so if you find that, for instance, that maybe the code isn't loud enough or it's just lost a little bit of, it, little, little bit of its integrity, but the tape looks sound, if you scroll through it and have a look at the tape itself and it looks sound, there's no folds or obvious tears or anything, then go, by all means go ahead and try and re-record the CDT over the original cassette. Sometimes it works, it doesn't work a lot, to be fair. But sometimes I do attempt to do that, and it does be successful. I don't think it's going to work with Yo-Yo Kung Fu. It's, it's completely lost its magnetic, magnetic integrity, and there's also a fold in the tape as well. So we're not going to do it with that. We're going to use a replacement cassette. So uh, that's one way to do it. Uh, remember, you want to keep the um, original label if you can. If you can't keep the original label, obviously trying to avoid destroying it, you can reproduce the label. Now what I do is I essentially just pop the uh, cassette up in this angle here and I take a very close in picture, much like that, as straight as possibly can. Nice sharp picture, as much as you can. And then you can reproduce this in a little bit of Photoshop, tidy it up, cut it out in, in Photoshop. And then I have a series of labels, which I don't have with me at the time, but you get you can buy some labels from a website called Tapeline, which I get quite a lot of stuff from. And you can buy cassette labels that are this shape, this size. And there is also a template, a PDF template that you can grab as well, which you can use with a PDF editor or any kind of similar sort of like desktop layout editor. Load the template into uh, that and then you can arrange the text and stuff that you rip from Photoshop onto that layer and you can print yourself out some fresh new labels and to be honest the results are pretty good a lot of the time so 
The other things you'll need definitely for this is a decent cassette recorder such as this Sony TMC818. This is a really good um, old school uh, tape recorder. It's got what you need. You can this this actually you can substitute this for a tape recorder for the Amstrad 6128, which I do because it does have all what you need. It has a ear an ear out, a mic in, and a remote, which is what you need. For this though, all you need is the mic in. Okay, and then you need obviously a mono 3.5 to 3.5 jack, which is what I've got connected up to the computer. You can do this with the uh, TZ Extrinio, which I've done before, of course. If you've not seen this, I've got a video on the TZ Extrinio. Uh, essentially, this will output the CDT signal directly to the CPC, which is sitting over there, uh, via a cassette adapter or a uh, soft mod, or hard mod, should I say, not soft mod, hard, hard mod. Uh, the problem with this is that it produces an extremely strong and very cloud signal that you really can't transposed tape that successfully it's just too loud especially when you want to try and get past things like speed lock and beep loaders and stuff like that it's too loud it's great for the cpc when you're loading directly into the system but not for putting it onto tape so what we use instead is if you can see that i'm going to just focus in there this is a little program a little javascript uh, a java environmental program called cdt to wear by marcus Homan, devil marcus known in the community and it was converted by um uh converted by the original uh, tzx to wav by francesco crespo which was for um spectrum but this works just as well for the amstrad to convert signals to a c to a, a cdt to a wav signal that wav signal then travels down here into your cassette recorder onto your fresh tape Things to look out for, though, I say what you can do is obviously you get your you can I, I get the majority of my uh, CDT files from CPC Power, but they are available on CPC Rules and a few other uh, CPC websites. But majority of them are pretty good, clean ones that have been ripped and posted on CPC Power. So I do use that frequently to grab the CDT files that I need. Uh, and also you want to check your volume control, your output volume control. Now I normally have this, say around about the 38 to 36 mark to start with. You can go all the way up to 45 sometimes, sometimes even 44. But for my my computer and its output ability, um, then it's around about that range is what you want. Sometimes it won't work and sometimes you'll have to retry. Uh, but you've got to get that volume sweet spot. You've really got to find it. Also, if you've got any enhancements on your computer or laptop, turn all the enhancements, all the sound enhancements off. You want basic mono, mono signal coming out of this. You don't want no bass boosts or anything like that. You've got to get the cleanest, most simplest signal you possibly can to get to this and get to your fresh tape. Other equipment I've got here is I've got a supply of tapes. As you can see, they, all these are from Tape Line. These are C30s. I've got black C30s, I've got some grey and white C30s as well. A couple of these are C45s and C40s as well. Uh, the tape is always going to be longer than the game, but you don't want to risk the chance of running out of game. You can use, I mean, you can order from Tape Line anything you want. You can order a C15 if you fancy, obviously, which has a, a seven and a half minute running time on either side. I like to use C30s, they generally fit every single game. Sometimes longer games for, lo for longer load times, and obviously there's going to be a lot of tape for um, shorter games. You can also create your own sort of versions of the tape as well. For example, Yaya -Ya Kung Fu is probably a, a six minute on either side. You can time this, of course. And it has, of course, uh, one set of levels on one side, which is the mountain, and one set of levels on the other side, which is the temple. Now, if you wanted to, which is what I am going to do, is record both sides onto one side of the new replacement cassette. Of course, I'll be using a black cassette for this. A basic black, non-screwed sealed cassette. And then see if both sides will fit on one, both uh, loads will fit on one side. And then of course, do the opposite on the other side. And that'll be your replacement cassette, for example, for Yaya Kung Fu. So these are the bits you will need for a successful restoration. And like I said, you really have to pay attention to the volume level that's coming out of your laptop. Make sure you've got no uh, sound enhancements. Clean heads, of course, on this. Brand new cassettes, so there's no excuse. And of course, a real CPC to test them on, which always helps, because otherwise you won't be able to test them. 
keep the uh, la label if you can heat them off you can soak them off but I prefer to heat them off and like I said when you do decide to heat them off you will completely destroy uh, the tape inside by the the heat induction and of course this <laughs> the plastic actually on the middle of most tapes will start to melt as well with the heat that's induced to uh, this and you can prise it off with your nail or a very fine craft knife and then just use a little bit of press stick just to stick it on the new one new one the press stick works wonders it really does just stick that on the new on the new cassette so we've got yaya kung fu to restore we've got street fire to do on the kicks label and we've got astro uh, plumber blue ribbon and uh, they, there'll be a, a variety sometimes of, of CDTs to use. Uh, Street Fire, for instance, I've got the original, so I'm going to put the original on there, which is the levels on one side. Both sides, both faces of the Yo Yo Kung Fu tape, the original release, which is the clamshell. And I believe Astro Plumber is a different kind of loader as well, so it might, it might be tricky to load that, but there is a basic 1.1 version of um, Astro Plumber, which you don't really want to use if you want to load it onto a 464 because the 464 has basic 1.0 so a 1.1 version of a game won't work at all so that's basically it guys that's what we do and what I'm going to do now is uh, go through a process of uh, doing a restoration and hopefully you can get some tips from this and if you want to restore your own cassettes then these are the methods that I use if you do find that you've got a certain game such, such as a multi-loader, a musical loader, and that are tricky to restore. Sometimes they won't work, they won't restore. It's all to do with the settings that you've got coming into the tape deck. Uh, it's all to do with volume settings, pitch settings, and stuff like that. Now, you'd have to use some sort of graphic equalizer. Personally, what I've done in the past on the laptop is convert the signal to a RAV, because this automatically converts it to a WAV anyway. Open the WAV in something like a, a music player. I've got Winamp, Win, Win, I've got Winamp on this, and that has a graphic equalizer with it, and you can mess around with the pitch controls and stuff like that. Or, or you can have a much more specialist uh, tape recorder, of course, which where you can mess around with the tape volume, the tape record volume, and stuff like that. This one doesn't really have a tape record volume. It has a volume control. Uh, I really don't ever touch it. I just run it one turn, and leave it there that's where i leave it because uh, i don't believe it affects the actual record volume on this right okay so let's crack on and see if we can restore yaya kung fu so as we watch this i'd just like to say this is the second video i've done on uh, uh, cassette restoration it's kind of a follow-up video to the first one um essentially back then we were using the tzx duino as uh the source for the CDT and of course since then it, it, I do point out the flaws in that very video about using that so as a source and like I've already said the source is that it's just uncontrollable the, the, the signal is so so deep so loud so strong and uh, with the computer and with CDT to WAV you get a lot more uh, control over that signal and this very load itself took three attempts to do uh, this uh, as we're ever watching it, it because you had to keep adjusting the volume settings getting it right finding that sweet spot but there we go so I thought I'd just to let you all know that that is kind of a follow-up video to the first one that I did uh, so I'm gonna speed on this while I uh, take these labels off these labels come off fantastically well by the way as you'll be able to see and you can also see there I have uh, taken a few pictures just in case uh, the labels tore or came off make sure you do that make sure you take pictures uh, first before you start uh, blasting it with hair dryers and tearing labels off So here we are with the restored version of Yaya Kung Fu and as you can see here it is and I've loaded the game successfully. It took several attempts to do it and we'll play the game and see if everything's fine. 
which looks like it is. Yeah, looks like it's all good. And there we go. So what I've done with this one, I had to do several attempts. Let's pause the game. Let's pause the game. So what I had to do with this one is uh, it does have a Speedlock uh, um, 7 protection system on it. It took me three attempts to get this uh, the standard um, ROM to load uh, by messing around with some of the settings. Essentially I got it recorded uh, eventually on a 32 level setting uh, on the volume uh, using a uh, single band uh, recording wave, uh, recording track. And that what eventually succeeded. I also put on the B side a fast speed speed load version of the game which I also found uh, on CPC Power which essentially just loads the entire game in a fraction of the time and just loads this background. So we have two versions of the game on the same cassette. Fantastic. Now let's put the label back on and finish the restoration of Yaya Kung Fu. So here we are with the, with the restored tape. I'm just going to take the uh, right protection uh, tabs off which I stuck on. It's always handy. Have a bit of a uh, tape around with you. Let's do that. I, you can use blue tack. Uh, to stick in the in the tabs there uh, I personally like to use tape give this a quick wipe and then we've got the uh, two labels which I successfully took off actually all in one great great way they came off so uh, we'll put the mountain first on the general side a little bit of a little bit of prit stick there not too much you don't want to go overboard just to get the tackiness back to it Okay, and we'll pop that on that side there. Get it pretty straight. Yep, that's pretty good. And then obviously it won't be the original temple level on the B side because it's all on one side now. We've just got the speed load version on the B side instead. It's a different version of the game, but we're going to stick the original label on it anyway because we like the original labels. It's nice to have the original labels on. And then I'll pop that on there. Oops, slide it a bit. And there you go. That is. It took a it took a while this one because of the speed lock protection. But there we go. Yo Yo Kung Fu is restored. That is now a working game. Go back in its case, and it's done. Um, zoom in a bit there. Zoom in about there. There we go. And it's done. There we go. So that is my method of restoration, everybody. I hope you found that helpful. If you want to restore your own cassettes, any questions, just drop me a message in the description box. Thanks for watching. Novabug out. Hey, Novabug here. I do hope you enjoyed this video. Please support the channel by liking and commenting, and of course subscribing if you haven't already done. If you would like to support me further, please consider joining my bug army via Patreon. And also don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Parlor, BitChute and Twitch. And a salute to my Bug Army Generals Sam M, Sweet Nanak, Pete Walker and Craig Harrison. Thank you everyone for supporting me. Nova Bug, out.